as tonight's MC, I do have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker. Please help me welcome Luann Beekler. Okay, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. So we're going to talk about what's passion got to do with it. What does passion have to do with business? Anybody got an idea? Everything. everything. I love that. Let's start with talking about what does passion mean. So what does the word passion mean to you? Excitement. Belief. Perfect. Excitement. Joy. Joy. I love that. What was that? Purpose. Purpose. Devotion. Devotion. Conviction. Motivation. Motivation. Exhilaration, all great words, all great one words, right? And passion is that thing that inspires us, that drives us, that gets us out of bed in the morning, right? We boil it down to it's those things that you care the most about, those things that you love the most, and you'll do whatever it takes for them. Sound good? Yes. So why would it be important to know what you're passionate about? Know what you should do. To know what you should do. Sell more. So that you can sell more? So that you have joy. I'm pointing to you because Kent said joy before, right? Yeah. Would you feel more joy in your life if you were living your passions? Yeah. More fulfillment at the results that you get? Yes, absolutely. That's why it's important to know what you're passionate about. Another reason is what we know is only 20% of working Americans are living their passions. Only 20% of working Americans are living their passions. How does that feel? Sad. Sad, right? True. True? He believes it to be true. <laughs> right? What are the other 80% doing? Phoning it Existing. Existing. Phoning it in. Phoning it in. That's an interesting way to put it. Faking it, hoping that they make it. Working Faking it until they hope they make it. I think they're a little bit more passionate, those people. <laughs> Working for the other 20%, potentially, right? Yeah. Often just going to a J-O-B for what? Money. For the paycheck, right? That's the true thing that we've come down to, is a lot of people just going through the motions for the almighty paycheck. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping people find their passion. I want people to live in joy and enjoy this life that they've been gifted. Anybody else? So I call it igniting the heart of business, and that's what I want to do, is go into a businesses and bring back the joy in the workplace. Would that be good? Yeah. yeah. And so we're going to speak about that. It is a competitive imperative. Only by loving what you do will you actually do more and do it better than the person sitting next to you. That's by the author of Execute the Art of Getting Things Done. So in other words, in order to get things done for yourself or in your organization and to be competitive in the workplace, you have to love what you do. But the other thing the world does for us is it tells us not to talk about that. Like, don't talk about that love word in business. Except the reality is, do we want our customers to love us? Yeah. We do. So we better love ourselves first before our customers are going to love us. Do we want our employees to love coming to work? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so we need to demonstrate that first. We need to set the example, all right? And what I believe is we just need to get people back into their heart space and understanding what that means. So tonight we're going to talk about a philosophy that's called the passion test. Anybody heard of it? Yes. Two people, only two people? Come on. Really? Raise your hands. Only two people? Very good. The Passion Test is a best-selling book that helps people identify their top five passions. And I've been certified by the authors of it to help people do just that. How about this? If you haven't heard of the Passion Test, have you heard of the Strength Finder? <coughs> Much more people have heard of the Strength Finder. What does the Strength Finder help you do? Find your <laughs> it helps you find your top five strengths. That was a trick question, right? Okay. So the Strength Finder is a test, though, right? You can go online and take the test. So if you have yet to do it, I highly encourage it. Right? Just Google the Strength Finder 2.0. You'll find their website. You no longer even need to buy the book. You used to have to buy the book, and then there's a code in the back. And the book describes 35 different strengths or characteristics, innate talents that we as human beings might carry. 
And then it, about 35 pages of it describes the scientific methodology behind why the test works. Who cares? <laughs> Not my gig, right? So I don't profess to understand how that test works. Highly believe in it, however. And I know that when I found my top five strengths, I was like, oh yeah, that's me. But it's a feeling of confidence, of knowledge, of acceptance of just who I am, OK? So for like 20 bucks, you can go on their website and you can find the top five strengths. The passion test, not a test. Good news. There's no test in it. It is a philosophy. It is a process. I facilitate people through a process of helping them to identify their top five passions and set a course to living that in their life. I give them tools and tips on how to make sure they do that because it's fighting against society's patterns. Because society says, look like everybody else, act like everybody else, go to work, do what you're supposed to do, right? Make a good living, and you'll be OK. The reality is, so we're all squelched down from actually stepping in fully to who we are and living our passions full out. And so what the process says is helps you to feel confidence in that. And you put the two pieces together of understanding your top five strengths and your top five passions, and it's a powerhouse of knowledge of just who you were designed to be, and just go do that. So it allows us to stop questioning who we are, to stop questioning our decisions, and follow in line with exactly who we were designed to be and what gifts we were meant to deliver in this world. How would that feel? Great. And a little enthusiasm in the room? <laughs> It is a revelation. So passion and business, what does that mean? Well, we already said, passion are those things that hold the greatest meaning. It's what matters most to us. Ought we be working in a field that we feel that way about? Right? That we really care about it. Actually, all great achievements in history occurred by people who are following their passions. Can you think of any? Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Come on, people. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Martin Luther King? My, my, my on the side, Microsoft, Bill Gates. Bill Gates? <laughs> Harry Tubman? How about Steve Jobs? Michael Jordan. Elon Musk? Michael Jordan, right? We have examples all around us of really successful people who followed their passions to get there. All right? <clears throat> now, this Harris Interactive Study, 2010, uh, 2010, the one I showed you before, that was to only 20% of working Americans are living their passion, that was 2005. So they did it again in 2010, and now it's up to 30%. We at the Passion Test family, that's what we call ourselves, who have been doing this work, um, hope that we've had an impact on that to make that shift. And so the numbers are moving up in the right direction. right? But it's about helping everyone, our employees, our team members, our, um, our colleagues, to step fully into living their passion. So we can change that number. Some people say that a focus on the money-based decision making led to our global economy collapse in 2008. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. I see a few heads nodding, right? So what I also know is that only 80%, no, less than 80% of CEOs remember the meaning behind their company the passion that created the company that they now are in charge of. Because they're totally focused on the bottom line. Anybody watch Undercover Boss? What happens in Undercover Boss? Every single time. The boss realizes he has absolutely no idea what the team is doing on the front lines interacting with the customers. Right? And that's what's happening out in our business community today. Right? The people that are in charge of running the business have absolutely no idea what's going on in the front lines. And so we need to engage our employees, our teams, on the front line. There are three types of employees. There are engaged employees, there are disengaged employees, and there are actively disengaged employees. <laughs> okay? The actively disengaged employees are on your time looking for another job. The disengaged employees are around the water cooler complaining about you and everything else and about the company. And interestingly enough, we are taught to be complainers. We're not taught to be the positive people in the world, right? How many of you go to work every day and go, I'm so happy, I'm so glad I'm here. Isn't this a fabulous, beautiful day? 
Good for you, Alex. I love you all that do that. Keep doing it. But by and large, that was less than 20% of the audience that raised their hand that they do that, right? So we're not taught to do that. And so people find the one thing that's going wrong, and they spend all their time complaining about that instead of the positive reasons why they're there in the first place. And what Gallup shows us is that, six, that a disengaged employee costs the company on average $16,000 a year. Costs them $16,000 a year. While a fully engaged employee can increase your bottom line by $32,000 a year. That's nearly a $50,000 spread. So would it be valuable to really engage your employees in the mission vision of the organization? In the passion that you have for what you do, right? Instead of sticking it in a drawer, we need to fully engage them with us. So Gallup also did a study, okay, this is separate from the Harris Interactive study, that says that on average, only 29% of employees in any given business are engaged in their work. On average, only 29% of employees in any given business are engaged in their work. What I found most phenomenal is that that's really close to the 30% passionate, right? That those two things align. People who are passionate about their work are engaged in the work. But you have 71% of people in businesses that are not engaged in the work. And I don't know how many employees you have, but multiply that out. Even your team, if you're in a network marketing company, right? Or organizations that you interact with that have hundreds of thousands of employees and think about those numbers, okay? So you can do the math on that. Actively disengaged employees cost U.S. businesses between $270 billion and $343 billion in low productivity and absences every year. So Gallup just did the math on those percentages, right? And the businesses in the world. So even the smallest business, right, again back to the $50,000 gap, right, is it worth investing in your team to switch that and move your employees from the $16,000 loss to the $32,000 of more profit coming in the door, right? Now this is where uh, business owners get really nervous about what I present on. They go, wow, wait a minute though. Luann, if you come in and you help them find their passion, I'm going to lose 70% of my staff. <laughs> so they don't want to talk to me. They're scared. And I get it. It took me a little bit to figure that out. But over the years, over the 10 years that I've been doing this work in businesses, what I have found is that more than 95% of people intuitively find themselves in the right place. They just don't know it anymore, right? because we are living unconsciously and we are going through the motions of life like robots often. And we're not acknowledging that the work that we're doing brings us joy in our heart. We're too busy focusing on all the negative stuff that's happening, either in the company or the world. And so we focus on the one little negative thing and all the blessings that we have on the other side aren't getting any of our attention, right? We focus on what's going wrong in the company and then instead of why I came here in the first place to serve other people or what I love about it. I'll give you a quick story on that. <clears throat> Worked with a company, 25 employees. Um, uh, it is a pet store and boarding facility for dogs and horses. And <laughs> it's like the Cabela's for, for pets. Okay? Everybody know what Cabela's is? Right? For hunters. So it's like the Cabela's for pets. Beautiful place. Okay, 25 employees, I'm doing the work, and they kept complaining, complaining, complaining about the gate in the fence line being in the wrong place to take the dogs out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could hardly get them off this negativity. And finally, I stopped the whole seminar, and I said, look, if that gate being in the wrong place in the fence line is so awful and full of anxiety that you have a hard time coming to work in the morning, then you got to quit. I looked over my shoulder, praying that the boss was not behind me and the owner, that he would have been freaking out on me. And then I turned around, they all got silent. And I said, here's what I know. We have identified that your, your clientele, your target market, are pet parents, people that treat their pets like their kids, right? And most of you in this room are pet parents. You own three, four, five, six dogs even. 
You get to bring them to work with you every day. They get fed here, they play here, they get bathed here. I'm thinking you got a pretty good deal going on. Can we forget about the gate in the fence line right now? The company's only four years old. We got lots of work to do to become the real company we want to be. Give it time. I always tell the employees, I say, if you really find that you're in the wrong place, then what do you got to do? You got to tell your manager, I don't fit in here, and give them a chance to replace you and have a positive exit from this organization. Out of those 25 employees, one came forward at the end of the seminar, and he said, he said, I don't belong here. I'm like, what's going on? He goes, I don't like dogs. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like why are you here? And he goes, I'm a handyman. I can fix anything around this place, and that's what I do, little fixes here, there, and everywhere, you know? But you just can't escape the dogs. <laughs> they board 250 dogs a night, right? Everybody else was in the right place. So it's about bringing people to the awareness of the positives and the blessings and the gifts that they have, coming there to share their gifts with the world on the mission of an organization that really has the same love as they do. Okay? And so managers do not lose that many employees. This is my favorite, however, the Kelly Global Workforce did a study that said 51% of workers would rather have more meaning in their work than pay or status. 51% of people would rather have more meaning in their work than pay or status. And lots of people today are talking about the Y generation and how difficult the Y generation is to work with. And I'm here to tell you it's no longer the letter Y, it's the word Y. They want to know why. Why am I doing this work? What is the meaning of this work? How does it change our world to be a better place? And when you can draw that line for whatever task you're asking them to do of why it's going to improve our world, how they're contributing to make things better, then they're, in, they're engaged. Okay? But the days of telling people to do something just because I said so and this task needs to be done are gone. They're gone. Those were the days of the Industrial Revolution and the assembly line. And so we have to draw that meaning back into the work for them. And then there's all these other benefits once you engage the team with passion into the organization. They have a more positive effect on your customers. They're more creative about problem solving. They're more open to presenting ideas and creating innovations and open to change rather than let's just leave everything the way it is. They're more likely to have positive relationships with their coworkers and even build friendships. I don't know about you, but we spend more time at work than we do at home. Would it be nice to have some people around us that we kind of liked? Right? So those are the environments that we need to create in our teams, in our workplaces, so that people want to be there. So in the work that we do with the passion test, and again, it's not a test, it's a process, we have, um, we have uh, developed it into a process called the Passion Test for Business to help people engage their teams with passion. And it begins with a five-step process that starts by discovering the company's unique contribution statement. Okay? It's a combination between discovering your why. Anybody know Simon Sinek? Right? Start with why. Really popular today. Okay? Absolutely true, right? Find out why we're doing what we're doing. What is the meaning of the work that we're doing in this organization? You combine it with your unique selling proposition, and you create what we call your unique contribution statement. It is one articulate short, short phrase that tells the world who you are in an instant. All right? And then we create clarity on how we want to deliver that value by identifying the top five passions for the business. These might have been called core values historically, right? We call them passions. Even after I've done work with companies, they sometimes go back and call them values again. But the reality is we believe passions have more inspiration and action-based language than core values historically have in most companies. Okay? <clears throat> we create a vision. Not a vision statement like you've ever seen before, but a vision of what we want the company to look like 
10 years from now when all things are operating ideal. And then five and then two years and we're sort of backing it down and then we create an action plan for what needs to happen now to make changes in our organization to create the kind of company that we want to have. We call it a cultural action plan because that's what we're doing. We're creating culture in organizations, a culture of living by our values. I don't know about you, but historically when I worked in corporate America, well, they had those company values, but they were in a drawer somewhere and nobody looked at them. What we're talking about is using them on a daily basis. Everybody knows them, everybody has them memorized, and they become a part of your decision, decision making. Somebody told me once that Nordstrom's has a one-page employee manual. And it says, do the next right thing. Do the next right thing in alignment with our core values, and we will back you every time. So it's instilling those core values, in our case, passions, into the employees, into the organization. So the organization that I'm affiliated with, the Passion Test Programs, uh, that certified me in this work, our unique contribution statement is inspiring transformation through love and service to humanity. A short, inspiring phrase that says who we are, what we want to do, inspire transformation through love in service to humanity and who we serve. So we use a formula once we get all of this established on how we work with it. Basically, the beginning of it is intention, right? That's the foundation we've laid. We set the intention for what we want this company, this organization, this business to look like by clearly stating what our values are, what our vision is for where we're going in the organization. Then we need to put our attention on those things by choosing in favor of those things every day, OK? Attention engages action. And then no, no tension. It's a great little formula. It rhymes, right? Intention, attention, no tension. Let go, let it unfold in its right and perfect timing rather than trying to force it and push it and make things happen. Because when we force and push and scratch and struggle, right, we just create what is called contraction. And when we're in contraction, we're all shut down and no good things can happen for us. Rather, we want to be open to the possibilities when we fall in alignment with who we say we are, right? It's called integrity. When we fall in alignment with who we say we are and we follow the values, the passions that we've set out for the organization, and we ask our team to do the same thing, and then we allow it to unfold in its perfect timing. So it becomes a decision-making tool for everyone, right? We say the key to living a passionate life is whenever you're faced with a choice, a decision, or an opportunity, choose in favor of your passions. Consistently choose in favor of your passions. That is why people need to memorize them, know them, know the top five passions for the organization, and allow to empower your employees, your team, to go out and make decisions in alignment with those passions, with those values, just like Nordstrom's, right? And now we create a fabulous culture where everybody feels empowered and joyful to participate in creating and contributing to something powerful in the world. The best way to communicate with your team is through the heart, rather than the head, by stirring passion and emotion, rather than appealing to reason or logic. Reason or logic is what we want to do. Tell them, just do it, because I said so. And it's going to result in this. That's not enough. And appeal to their heart and their passion as we move forward in the world. Anybody know Steve Farber? I read any Steve Farber books? One of my friends. OK, I've given you three books already to read. I love to tell people lots of books to read. Steve Farber wrote a book called Radical Leap. Leap stands for love, energy, audacity, and proof. And it's about extreme leadership. I'll let you pick those up. But there's where my favorite quote comes from. Do what you love in service to people who love what you do. Steve's latest book is Love is Just Damn Good Business. <laughs> Highly recommend you look up Steve Farber. Anyone, I talked to a few people in the networking that are in leadership training. Steve's got great material, and he also certifies in his content. Really loves Steve Farber. And last but not least, Steve Jobs, who followed his passion to get where he is. If you are working on something exciting that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you. So that's what passions do. They create that vision so that you're pulled and inspired forward rather than pushed the pain will push you until the inspiration pulls you. 
So I love helping people find that inspiration so they can live in joy and fulfillment in their life and creating the business of their dreams and serving people who they love to serve. My name is Luann Beekler, and I love what I do. <laughs> and I'd love to help any of you find your passion and explore that culture in your organization. I'm going to be back over there by that little table later on after we're done with the motivation and uh, stop by and talk with me and uh, ask me any questions at that point because uh, Travis is pulling me off the stage about now. <laughs> and I thank you for your time and attention.